I'm Robinson Wren, so today I'm going to read you the story, The Greedy Zebra. Long, long ago, all the animals in the world were a dull, depressing colour. No coats, no horns, no spots and no stripes. Just dull and dusty. Until... One stormy day in the heart of the leafy forests of Africa, there was a great rumbling in the earth and all of a sudden a huge cave appeared in the ground. A few of the animals crept cautiously up to this new and wonderful sight and when the bravest of them peered into the darkness, he saw something glittering amongst the rocks. The cave was full of furs and skins, all glossy and new. Stepping inside, he came across horns and tails of countless shapes and sizes and needles and threads of a thousand different colours. Trembling with excitement, he rushed out to tell the other animals what he had seen. The news spread far and wide and soon all the animals were on their way to see the cave, running and jumping, sliding and swinging and slithering through the trees. All that is, except one. Greedy Zebra. Greedy Zebra never ever stopped eating. He certainly wasn't going to give up a single mouthful for a silly old cave of any sort. Oh, lots of times to go visiting caves, mumbled Greedy Zebra, stuffing far too much grass into his bulging mouth. Plenty of time, he said. Soon, all the animals in the jungle were gathered at the mouth of the cave, waiting for Elephant to speak. Elephant was the one who knew everything, because Eagle had told him all the secrets of the spirit of the mists. <coughs> he coughed pompously and addressed the gathering. It is time for you to all have coats, he said. There are all kinds of materials here from which you may choose. You will be issued with needles by rabbit. But there is only one needle each, so take good care of it. Now you may go in, but no shoving and pushing, and keep in an orderly line. Meanwhile, Greedy Zebra was still eating. Munch, munch, he went. Hmm, this particular grass is so delicious. He stopped to gape at the beautiful thing in front of him. It couldn't be, but it was. Sable, the antelope. And she was wearing the most glamorous new coat and horns. She was wearing horns. When Greedy Zebra heard that the coat and the horns came from the cave, he trotted off as fast as his little legs could carry him. But he couldn't resist a leaf here or a succulent blade of grass there. Oh, and that patch was too good to pass by without one little bite. From time to time, he met another and another animal and yet another one of the wonderfully clothed animals. Stopping for a last bite, not far from the cave, he watched Leopard finishing her sewing. Leopard, as careful as usual, had sewn the most splendid fur coat with spots all over it. Greedy Zebra could hardly believe his eyes as he watched Leopard, Leopard wriggle into the perfectly fitting fur. I shall have spots like that, he said to himself, and he hurried off, eager to reach the cave. But it was a hot day, so he stopped for a cool drink at a stream, and there he came across a patch of the greenest grass he'd ever seen. Mmm, delicious, he munched, smacking his chubby lips. Back at the cave, most of the animals were leaving. Only rhino and elephant were still cutting their material. They had chosen a very strong grey cloth. Poor old rhino, who was very short-sighted, had stuck his horns in any old howl and was having a terrible time. He was too nervous to ask elephant for help because he knew that the pompous animal would only make fun of him. He dropped his needle and the more frantically he searched, the further into the bushes he kicked it. He put on the baggy coat and shuffled off in a very bad mood. 
Just then, greedy zebra trotted by, with bright blades of grass bulging from his mouth. Hmm, I'll have spots like leopard, and horns like kudu, a mane like lion, and a tail like cheetah. I shall be the finest looking animal in the forest. And at the risk of indigestion, he gave a short gallop into the cave. Then he stopped aghast. There was nothing left. No horns, no fine cloth, nothing. Frantically, he searched through the cave, but all he could find were a few strips of black material. Forlornly, he cut them all to the same size and stitched them together. It looks very tight, he thought nervously to himself. Being a very big zebra, he had a terrible time squeezing into his coat. He pushed and grunted and oohed and ahed and pop! He was inside it. But what a tight fit. It was nearly bursting at the seams around his big tummy. He trotted down to the stream to take a quick bite of a leafy bush and pop! His coat burst open. Pop, pop, pop! His tubby tummy squeezed through the seams. Oh, how the monkeys roared with laughter. To this day, his chubby tummy shines through his coat because he is so greedy. And that was the greedy zebra. I hope you're all well and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.